Hi everyone, it's Linda from Linda Z's in Arlington Heights, Illinois, and I'm ready to go into detail and show you some of the actual step-by-step -step embroidery on this jacket that I was showing in a prior video. Uh, the video that I had prior was just doing an overall on the beautiful Brother Luminaire 3. This is a Luminaire 3, I'm doing this one on too. And I had some questions from people uh, a couple of pe my friends actually called and said, Linda, could you actually do a step-by-step, -step, um, you know, not take too much time, but just kind of go over exactly what you did. What I was featuring in the other video is why I love this machine so much and what the great embroidery techniques are. So today what I want to do is actually show you this jacket that I have, it's a knit jacket. It's a lightweight knit. You can see I have a denim jacket on and it has got embroidery on here. And then if you, I turn around, you can see the back has got embroidery also. It's a little cold here in Chicago today. So I do have my uh, long sleeves on. And then I do have an embroidery on this uh, shirt underneath and little glitz. I think it's a lot of fun to put the uh, rhinestones on. But on the particular jacket that I have underneath the machine, it's different from this because the jacket I'm wearing is a denim and it doesn't stretch. The one that I have on the machine is a lightweight knit. It's a, almost a terry and it will stretch a lot. So one of the things that I've done on this, you probably remember from prior videos when you're trying to do embroidery, whether it's for a quilt or for a jacket like I'm doing here, you would always want to use as much fusible as possible. And because there are different types of fabrics out there, the fusible interfacings will change. There are a couple of different brands that we use. We love the OESD and we love the Floriani. They both have great, uh, and Alex Anderson also has some great stabilizers out there for the, um, you know, the uh, quilting arena. But for this particular one, what I used is a, it's a fairly light, it's a white, because this is a gray jacket and it did have a little bit of um, a light white in the background. You can see it under my, my machine here, the back of it. And what I did is I took this um, uh, fusible and took it over to the iron. I determined where I was gonna put it on my shoulder. I didn't want it down here, I wanted it up here more. And the great part, and one of the features that I showed, and you can go back and reference that if you'd like to, on the video was that there is a projector on this machine that scans and goes very quickly on the, um, the fabric. It's one of the fastest scanning machines out there. And what happens, because I think most of you know that Brother is a, um, from the business machines. They have so many uh, scanning functions from their printers and much of that technology from the Japanese um, research and development has been incorporated into, into this machine. That's why this scanning is so fast and so accurate. So you can see again, I've taken this in, and taken this, um, no, it's called no show mesh fusible. And there's a power mesh out that would work very well also now. And like I said, the other brands have it too. And what I do is I start pressing in the middle, then I press out, then up, down, and around. And I make sure I don't usually press the corners down real hard. You can see that this is a very small hoop. It's only a four by four. And what's really fun, you can see on the screen here, I'm gonna do these three little monsters that are just a really cute little guys. And I think the colors will blend in with the little dragon that I have on the other side. This is actually on the screen, a um, design that was in the Disney, it's one of the Marvel um, or one of the Pixar um, designs. It's a licensed design, so you can't sell it but you can sew it and you can give it to people and you can do all of those fun things. So let's get started. I have the um, thread already done. You know what, I'm gonna take this out and show you again. Some of you don't realize now, the foot is up so I can pull this through. When I'm threading, I always hold my thread on the right and then I pull it through on the left. And there's numbers and everything on here, but this is the part I want you to see on here. 
See how every single time it never fails me, which I love, is this automatic threading. And I, I know we have other machines that we're going to show you too that are really good. And they've got little levers on the side and they consider that automatic threading. But this truly is automatic threading because I'm just pressing a button and it automatically threads the needle. Now I also have on the top of this hoop a water soluble topper. The other thing I want to point out to you before I start, you see the two and the top here? This is a white um, thread. It's the number one that shows on the screen. It's the very first color. Then I put the second color next to it. You see how I brought it up here on the little um, thread stands? It's spooling off. You don't, I'm not going to put it on the side spool because I want it to spool off of the machine, off of the thread cone, and it'll work really well. But I have something else over here, and I'm going to bring it into the picture so you can kind of see it right up here by the machine. This is a portable uh, thread stand. You can see this is going to be the third color I'm going to use. I'm just showing you how these thread stands work. They're just great. And this thread stand, the thread will pull right off here, and it comes up on the clip at the top. You can see when I bring it down here to the, the picture, you can kind of see it coming off. And I'll try that too. I want you to be able to see. The one thing that you do want to do is you don't want to put it just to the side or you, you want to put it where it's not going to be inhibited by any piece of the machine. And when I get to that step, I'll show you what I, what I mean by that. I'll go ahead and start the machine. You can see it's red here. When that foot goes down and this little control goes to green, that means it's ready to start. So as it's starting, number the number one thread color over here on the screen, it shows you that that is the white. You can also see that the, the little, um, it's going to be their eyes, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you can see that they're, um, they're shown on the screen here too. And once that color is done, the machine is going to stop. You look over on your screen and you will see that the next color, it says 519. I did not have that color with me, but I have something dark. You could do a dark navy or whatever. I love their little signal and I leave that on. Some people cut it up, you know, you can turn that off if it bothers you. But it's kind of nice to know that your uh, next thread is going. Now, did you see how I cut the thread here and I'm pulling out it out from the front? That's very important. Now, the next thread I'm going to pull, I've already pulled it through this little gadget at the top. There is a little clip here. I'm actually not going to use it. I'm just showing it to you. And the reason I'm not using it is that this thread is working beautifully. If I ever have something that's spinning a little bit or the thread is starting to get a little out of control, then I use that little clip. Now watch again the magic threading. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> okay. It's all set and ready to go. So all I have to do, I could set that is that the foot automatically goes down. I just happen to have it not set because I want you to see what's going on here. And you can see that there's a very tiny little design. It's not even a minute and it's done. I think it's his mouth. He's open <laughs> quite wide on that one. <laughs> you can see why I didn't want to change it to another thread. All right, so I cut those threads and pull them to the front and get rid of them in your basket. This is the third one that I'm using on the um, other spool. And because that spool is a little bit low down there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take these off of here and I'm going to actually thread it through from there to here. If you didn't have this thread stand, now this thread stand comes with this machine. See how it's coming through there? I very seldom would use this. The only reason I would use the third spool like there and you actually can buy another one that has more spools is because I can get my three threads all set up and ready to go so I don't have to worry about uh, the next color and that's what I'm going to do while I'm while this is sewing so let's go to the next color you can see it's um it's a bright green look at that automatic threading I love it <laughs> we'll go ahead and sew it 
And these are the, um, the wonderful little uh, faces of the monsters. I think that's what they call them. <laughs> they are, are just so sweet. Now this is a lot of detail work, but I want you to be able to see down here, there is literally no puckering whatsoever. And the reason why there is no puckering on this very, very stretchy, lightweight knit, knit jacket, see, it, there's no lining or anything behind it, is because of the fact that it is stabilized very, very strongly on the bottom of the jacket. The top has got more stabilizing. It's a water-soluble topper that I will pull off at the end, and then I'll just spritz it and it will give you a really, really cool, um, cool look. So this is the very first one. After I'm through with that, I have one, two, three, four, five, six colors. And they're, they're little, they're not gonna take a lot of time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let it sew. Uh, you can watch it for a little bit and then I'll just jump to the end and show you the completed design. See what's happening here? This is really color sorting all the colors together. I think it's just a wonderful thing that they're doing. You can see the first one was done, now the second phase, and now we're going into the third phase. So all the greens in that particular color are done first. Then it will go to the next color, which is going to be a purple. And I think it probably will start, it'll be interesting to see. I can look here on the next one and see, oh, I see there's a little, um, there's little uh, hands too that are kind of that neon green. And then the purple will start probably with this one, then go to the middle and then go over here. So it's not that you're doing one complete figure first and then a second or a third. You're using the colors in all of the designs put together. I think it's a, a great way that they digitize this. I hope you're noticing uh, something that I think is really fun that most of you probably uh, know about. I have used five different kinds of threads on this little design. This happens to be a Floriani. The one down here was an Isochord. There's a little um, Madeira one that I'm going to go, it's a side, it spools off of a small spool. It doesn't roll off the top, so it's better to put on the side. And then I have used a, um, um, a different, uh, oh, I used Glide on another one. So you do not have to use one brand of thread when you're doing your embroidery. And it doesn't have to be the exact color. That's the other thing. It's really fun to get creative and start using your own colors. Now, this is a licensed design. You can see they've actually put the logo on here. So we know that it's authentic. And when you do have a licensed design, it is nice to use their colors, but these are very, very close, as you'll see when I finish the last two. So I'm just about finished with the design. There's just a little, I think there's one minute left. And I wanted to show you something on the top of the machine here that you might notice. These are cross wound spools that really do work very well when they're on here. But look at how I'm working with the last one. It's cross wound but I put this cap over it so it won't get caught on any of the edges. And that way the stitching is doing very well. So again, all these little different kinds of thread uses, this one, this one over here, and then the thread stand are just things that'll help you, um, you know, do your embroidery faster. So this machine is so smart. It says, guess what? We are finished. Oh, and while I was waiting for it, I wanted you to know the bobbin thread I used also was Quilter Select. It's, I believe that's an 80 weight thread. It's a very lightweight bobbin thread. It's meant for um, the brother machines and baby lock machines. So it's a really good thread. And when you're using it, um, you'll find that uh, on the back, you know, these, if, if you don't like those longer thread clips, this is just how the digitizer does it. You can go and clip them like that and then shake them off real quickly and you won't have them even showing at all. Then take your little pink uh, strips off there. They come off very quickly. You can see as I'm pulling this off, everything came off. I'm gonna unhoop this. And then I'm going to take this to the iron and press it so that there will be no hoop burn at all on this. And 
voila, we've got a really cute little design here. Aren't they cute? I think they really turned out just sterling. And again, this is before it's pressed at all. All of this will come off. I spritz it with a little bit of water, press it, and everything will be good. On the back, I will press this, and then I'll, I'll press it, and then pull the, the corners back, press, pull them, and then all that sticky will come off on the stabilizer, and I just trim the stabilizer around the design so it's not real heavy. So we, here we have a cute little guy and then the little monsters in the back. So I hope this has given you a little bit of an idea of how to go by step by step. We'll do that on some of our other videos. I'll show you another machine that I really love and show you some of the features on it. And we'll go over that fairly quickly. And then the next video, I'll try to actually do an embroidery or a quilting design. Maybe I'll do a quilting in the hoop design so that you can actually see what the machine is doing. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I really appreciate it, and I hope to see you next week.